now. Good evening, everyone. The good mic is in the lodge. Happy Sunday night to you at exactly 10 o'clock, which is a half an hour late because I was planning on doing this at 930. But that's my fault. I was having technical problems. Welcome in. If you are new to the stream, I am glad you're here. Um, we are going to be fire doing some technical adjustments as we get started, but I've got guests in my, lo my lodge tonight. We're trying something new tonight. So I've got Andrew. Feel free to wave to the people, Andrew, because you're on the screen. And then I've got Noah, who you can also wave. Noah is sporting a really awesome bathrobe that is non-merch. It is not available as merch, but um, I'm sure Noah can tell you where he got his bathrobe at some point. Um, so what we're trying to do tonight is um, deal with um, some spam therapy. So what do I mean by spam therapy? Well, I'll tell you in a sec. But before I do, I want to thank my re most recent followers um, because we are closing in on 500, which is amazing to me. Now, I know that some of those are probably bots, but it's still kind of cool to see that since I started this, we are now at 486. And um, thank you, Raccoon Gem, for being our latest follower, bringing us to 486. Who knows? Maybe we'll get to uh, 500 sometime uh, before July. So tonight we're going to try something a little different at the beginning of the stream. I may be playing Elden Ring a little later in the evening. But tonight we are going to be um, doing something hopefully helpful to people, and that is um, spam therapy. So every week uh, I receive dozens of emails from people who do not exist asking me for my help usually in the uh, uh, form of giving some money. But when they do uh, ask for help, they have a really interesting story. And so one of the things I thought would be useful, because, of course, we can never really do therapy with people online um, because, uh, on Twitch or TikTok, because that's not what Twitch or TikTok is for. Um, but for people that don't really exist, um, that have problems, we could probably do something helpful. So what I've done is I've invited Andrew and Noah to come on and do uh, take turns doing dramatic readings of different requests for help I receive in my spam email box each week. Um, and what we'll do is we'll each we'll take turns reading these and. Um, Hopefully, I'll be able to offer some help to these people that aren't real. So who wants to go first? Noah, Andrew, who wants to go first? You got it, Noah. <laughs> That's <was> good. <laughs> um, suppose I'll start with a shorter one. Okay. Um, so with the introduction of Hello Friend, state, I am Mrs. Peggy Chan. I have a business deal I wish to execute with you. Therefore, I solicit for your cooperation to be in co collaboration with me to have this done. This is real, and I hope you will be interested. On hearing from you, I shall furnish you with more details on what to do next. I await your urgent response. Regards, Miss Peggy Chan. End scene. Wow, great. So first, Miss Peggy Chan, I want to thank you for taking the risk of reaching out to me because I can tell from your email, both because it's brief, but also because you're not willing to share a lot of details, that you may be feeling a little guarded. And often when people seek out therapy, whether they are real people or whether they're totally fictional, they start as guarded. And so I can hear, uh, Miss Peggy Chan, that you may be reluctant to share some of your details with me. Um, I also noticed a strength in you, which is that you clearly want to collaborate, so you are reaching out for some help, and you clearly are industri industrious and have sort of an entrepreneurial spirit. So it sounds like um, something um, urgent is is commanding your attention and that you, you, you know that you may need help with it. Um, if, if it's a business proposition, um, teamwork is dream work. More people can really help with that. So I am really glad that you reach, re reached out, even though I have no idea what you're talking about. 
Um, but I hope I've ex- sort of illustrated how even when we don't know the details of what someone is talking about, the way they communicate or the way they don't communicate often tells us something about them. So thanks, Ms. Peggy Chan. Feel free to send us another spam uh, and let us know what your non-existent business specifics are. All right, Andrew. All right. I don't know if I'll leave the screen when I go to uh, do this, but here we go. Uh, oh, man, this is a long one. <laughs> Greetings in the name of God. Please forgive me for stressing you with my predicament. But I'm a came a short email from my personal search. Afterward, I decided to email you directly, believing that you will be honest to fulfill my final wish before I die. Meanwhile, I am Mrs. Ayaka Azumi, 62 years old from Japan, and I am suffering from a long time cancer. And from all indication, my condition is really deteriorating, as my doctors have confirmed and courageously advised me that I may not live beyond two months from now, for the reason that my tumor has reached a critical stage, which has defiled all forms of medical treatment. As a matter of fact, registered nurse by profession while my husband was dealing on gold dust and gold dory bars till his sudden death, the year 2016, then I took over his business till date. In fact, at this moment, I have a deposit sum of $8,300,000 U.S. dollars with one bank, but unfortunately, I cannot visit the bank since I'm critically sick and powerless to do anything myself, but my bank account officer advised me to assign any of my trustworthy relative, friends, or partner with authorization letter to stand as the recipient of my money, but sadly, I don't have any reliable relatives and no children. Therefore, I want you to receive the money and take 50% to take care of yourself and family, while 50% should be used basically on humanitarian purposes, mostly to orphanages, home, motherless babies, home, less privileged and disabled citizens and widows around the world. And as soon as I receive your, I shall send you my pictures, banking records, and with full contacts of my banking institution to communicate with them on the matter. Hope to hear from you soon. Yours faithful, faithfully, Mrs. Ayaka Azumi. Wow. Thank you, Mrs. Ayaka Azumi. Um, and thank you for giving so much detail, especially given that you aren't real. It's very hard to give so much detail when you don't exist, but you've really taken some good time to do that. Um, so it... Um, Let's see, what can I start with? Well, first off, it sounds like you get a lot of comfort in, from your spirituality. And given how many problems you've got, I can see why you would take comfort in that sort of spirituality. Um, and I want to make sure that you understand that you're not stressing me out by telling me about your predicaments for, for a couple reasons. First off, you, you, you're not real. Um, so the fact that you're not real means you can't possibly... Uh, be giving uh, me stress uh, because I know you're not real and so therefore I know that you're not really in a predicament. But even when somebody who is a real person comes uh, into an office and wants to talk with us about some real predicaments, therapists are really good at, or hopefully pretty good at having boundaries. Not because we don't care, but because in fact, if we really can't tell where we stop and you start and we have your feelings and uh, we think your problems are our problems, we're not going to be any good to you. We're basically going to be a hot mess and nobody, you've already got enough problems uh, given all the things you've talked about. So you don't need me to uh, be adding to your hot mess by being a boundaryless, over promoting therapist. So please don't worry about stressing my predicaments, uh, you with my predicaments. Um, I'm glad that you spent some time searching for a therapist rather than just picking the first uh, real therapist to bring your non-real problems to. Um, and I'm glad that you... Um, think I'm honest, but I would encourage you not to trust me that much because um, you don't know me. And so, it, you know, you're believing I'll be honest is what we would call over idealizing. You don't have, uh, you've known me uh, now for a total of, you know, three minutes, perhaps, if you're watching this, which you aren't because you don't exist. But if you did exist and you were watching this, you would still not know me. So you can't really tell whether I'm honest or not. And that's what we would call over idealizing in terms of therapy. Um, 
I'm really sorry to hear that even though you don't exist, that you are going to be dying shortly. Um, and in the meantime, it does sound like you have a good sense of your identity. Um, uh, you were able to tell me who you were, your marital status, how old you were, and your country of origin. Um, and your suffering from long-term cancer is really unfortunate. Um, and it sounds like because your condition is really deteriorating that your doctors have advised you to really start to get your affairs in order. Um, so w one of the things that I can suggest is that you try to find somebody that doesn't exist to give you non-existent case management. That might actually help you. Um, therapy can be helpful, but um, when you're not real and you're dying, you probably need a lot more of a team around you than just me. Um, so you're a registered nurse by profession, um, I see, and that your husband was dealing on gold dust and gold dory bars until his sudden death. Um, I, I'm concerned about how well your husband was doing with his job, because if he was dealing with all of this gold and you still had to be a registered nurse, it sounds like maybe things were not going so well. Um, you don't mention what his sudden death was, but I imagine it was pretty traumatic for you. And I imagine that it was really challenging going from being an RN to taking over a gold dust, gold dory bars uh, business until um, right after he died. So it sounds like you've got a lot of money, 8,300,000 US dollars with one bank, but you can't visit the bank because you're critically sick. Now, what I would point out to you is that um, nowadays you can do a lot of your banking online. Um, most banks won't allow you to do banking online if you're not real, but you might find a bank that is actually willing to do online accounts with an unreal person. And if so, I would encourage you to open an account online so that you can have a little bit more of control over your finances. Because when people, whether they're real or not, are dying, they really feel a loss of control. And it would probably give you more of a sense of empowerment and control if you were able to deal with some of this financial stuff. Your bank account officer advised you to assign trustworthy relatives, friends, or partners with an authorization letter. Sadly, you don't have any reliable relatives and no children. Now, I have to say that one of the things that people do when they have as an opportunity when they have a terminal illness is they have a chance to say goodbye. Um, so if you have any non-existent family or any non-existent friends, um, now would be the time for you to reach out to them, whether you think they're reliable or not, and try to create some sort of relationship with them. Um, so I appreciate you um, wanting me to take 50% uh, in terms of uh, taking care of my myself with the money. Um, but uh, I, I really don't think that that would be a appropriate for me as a therapist to take half of your income when you're dying of cancer. In fact, I would really question what kind of person you imagine would be trustworthy that is willing to take half of your income. So this goes back to what you said about thinking I was honest at the beginning. And one of the things that we need to talk about here is how personality disorder may play into this, Ms. Azubi. If you are so quick to idealize people, imagine they're honest and give them 50% of your income, even if you aren't real and you're dying, that makes me question whether you might tend to over idealize people and also over devalue them. Perhaps these relatives of yours aren't as unreliable as you think. Perhaps some of this is you're swinging from extreme to extreme and it's really isolating you. Um, if you really are going to be dying in two months, I would encourage you to try to reach out to some of these non-existent family and friends and establish some sort of relationship with them that doesn't swing between absolute overvaluing and absolute devaluing. Thank you very much for your letter. Okay, guys, do you have anything that you wanted to share or comment on with either of these two folks? I think you really covered it in terms, of, particularly with Mrs. Azumi. Okay. Noah, anything that you had on your mind about either one of these two? Well, 
I personally agree with Andrew, but for the shorter one that I read, mm -hmm. I noticed how you outlined all the positives. Uh huh. You're right. So I didn't. I didn't get too critical with uh, um, Amparo di Binamara, and and part of the reason was because when they talk about the urgency of their situation and they're writing such a short letter with very few things. Um, uh, wait, I think this may be another one, not the one you sent me, not the one you read. Let me just make sure. Um, I think, you know, the one that you sent me, I was really struck by how guarded the person was. And I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to, um, push too much. Sometimes when people start therapy, even if they don't exist, they may be a little reluctant um, or, or a little guarded. And so a lot of times we like to take what's called a salutogenic approach, which is focusing on strengths rather than on weaknesses. Um, all right, so I've got one that I can share, and it seems like it's a pretty timely one. This one comes from Ivan Yuri, um, and Ivan writes, hello. Is my pleasure to inform you that my good name is Ivan Yuri and am 64 years old and a Ukraine citizen, but I lived in Russia as a business personal for a decade, and due to the current situation in my home country, Ukraine, and my resident country, Russia, I will therefore need an urgent assistance from you. And to brief you shortly, I will be glad if you can help me to receive fund in your country due to the current situation we are facing in my geographical zone. I will be glad if you accept my offer without any delay. I am ready for this because the Forex market is falling daily here in Russia, and the Russian government may frozen the bank account of resident Ukrainians in Russia. Therefore, I have to move out my capital fund before things gets out of hands. Hope to hearing from you urgently. Sincerely, Ivan Yuri. So Ivan, first off, I have to tell you, I really appreciate how hard it is to reach out and ask for help, not only when you don't exist, but when you don't exist and speak a language different than the language of the person you're reaching out to. Um, I It is clear to me that English is not your first language, um, but you really did a good job of articulating um, how how desperate you are, what you know, and and, and some of the concerns you have. Uh, I I don't know what the forex mar market is, so I can't really um, I can't really speak to it very well. Um, but I do know that um, the idea of being a refugee is very very stressful. Um, and I imagine that you are having a very hard time feeling some sort of uh, divided loyalties between where you're working and where you're residing and your country of origin. And, and that is something that a lot of people experience. Um, so my hope is that you will be able to um, find a community uh, support in Russia for other non-existent Ukraine refugees that would speak your language and probably be able to help you more, more than I can help you. Um, I do think that uh, it, it being displaced is difficult, but it does sound like you have some opportunity right now and a window of opportunity to maybe withdraw your money and keep it under a mattress or maybe buy something um, uh, that you can you know, carry with you that's valuable and you can resell somewhere else. Um, Thank you very much for contacting me and requesting my help. Um, and I'm sorry I can't do more. Let's see. Let's take another. Let's see what else we have for letters. And while I'm doing this, if you if either of you have anything that you think might be helpful for Ivan, please feel free to chime in because, it, you know, sometimes lay people have some really good ideas about this stuff. I say it was important that you acknowledge what you couldn't do. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Foreign currency exchange markets are probably pretty unstable, particularly for someone bouncing between Russia and Ukraine right now. Yeah. 
I think you're right. Those are very unstable. Um, Andrew, I'm going to be sending you over uh, another email um, for our, so that you can do a dramatic reading of our next spam uh, uh, patient. And uh, then I will also be doing one. I'll be sending one over to you, Noah, shortly. If you are just joining us, my name is Mike. I'm a therapist, a gamer, and a streamer. And tonight we are doing spam therapy, um, in which we are reading one of the many letters that I receive from people that do not exist in my spam folder, asking me usually for money. Um, but the usually the money they ask me for is accompanied by such a horrific or sad or depressing story that we thought we would do some readings of these letters and try to actually give some of these people um, some therapy, even though they are not real. If they were real people, we obviously would not be doing it because Twitch is not for real people to get therapy. Um, so, Andrew, it, feel free to uh, read, read that one, and I will be sending one along for you, Noah, shortly. All right, let's see here. Uh, I don't, I haven't received it quite yet. I do, sometimes there's a delay here where I am, so it may be a minute. Okay, let's. Uh, I haven't, I think the I urgent can go one. first if that's easier. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I just, I don't have another one. The two I had, I read one and Andrew. Uh, shared the other i see okay well i'll be getting uh, let me see if i can find another one for us um and andrew just keep checking your folder it should be from uh oh, i did, got it I, I did get one it was in my spam so it, <laughs> uh, my spam. here we go hello friend i'm so sorry for contacting you through this means this message may come to your spam folder <laughs> or junk due to bad network or distance I came across your email contact prior to a private search while in need of your assistance. I want you to see my daughter as your daughter as I, as I want her safe. My name is Paula Mohammed. I am from Saudi Arabia. I've been diagnosed with <laughs> esophageal cancer. It has defied all forms of medical treatment. And right now I have only a few months to live and I want you to use this money, Saudi Rial, uh, 20 million, which is about 5 million pounds to charity's home as my promise to Allah. Allah. Um, I have my only daughter, which I would like you to take care of as their father died when she was young and my late husband's brothers may kill her. They have sold my gold company and my late husband's oil companies due to my sickness. I am giving you 40% for you and your family. I will give you more details on how to get the money. Remember, remember Allah is the giver of wealth. Our Allah, I keep saying that right, is give us in this world that which is good and in the hereafter that which is good and protect us from the punishment of the fire. Um, Al Bakara two hundred one, yours truly, Miss Paula Muhammad. Thanks. Okay. All right. So thank you, uh, thank you for that heartfelt letter. Um, that 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 was a lot. Um, so Miss Miss Muhammad, uh, I, first off, I, I I kind of notice when you say you're sorry for contacting me through this means um that that is something that we would refer to as undoing um because if you really felt regret about doing it you wouldn't have contacted me um and i think it's important to to, to notice this because whether you're real or not if you do something and then you try to undo it it doesn't change the fact that you did it so first off i wouldn't say you're sorry because i don't think you are sorry however the good news is you don't have to be sorry. Even if you existed, it would be okay for you to ask for help. Now, let's talk about whether or not as a person that does not exist, 
if you somehow feel like you have to apologize for your non-existent existence. Um, it seems like you are very quick to offer apologies when really none are necessary. And so that may mean that you are a not real person that has low self-esteem. Um, and so if that's the case, it's really important to reach out to a therapist um, who can help you kind of work through this um, because apologizing for everything isn't, isn't really the answer. I know that wasn't why you talked to me uh, or reached out, but I thought it was important we start with that. Now, this message may come to my spam folder or junk due to bad network or distance. I think that's important that we focus on how you may be blaming other people for your problems. The fact is this spam message came to my spam folder because you're not real and you are a spammer. And so it is exactly where it's supposed to be in my spam folder, not due to a bad network or but due to distance. So it's interesting how you both apologize for things that are really not your fault um, but are, but then you try to blame other people for the things that you did, um, rather than, you know, accept responsibility for yourself. Now, a fun fact, usually when people have classic melancholia or neurotic depression, they are very much like this. They're constantly talking about how bad they are, how problematic they are, what a burden they are. And they really are more burdensome because they do that. Um, if they weren't constantly talking about how bad they were, uh, they would be uh, less difficult to be around. Um, if they weren't constantly berating themselves, they would be more pleasant company. So often when people do this sort of chronic berating, um, they're really actually displacing anger at someone else. And so the question is, Ms. Paula Muhammad, who are you displacing your non-existent anger on? Now, you do mention your daughter and that your daughter, um, you see her and want her to be safe, which makes me wonder, you know, who's really threatening her? Um, is it perhaps your own unconscious hatred of your daughter that is putting her most in danger? Just a thought. Now, you mentioned that you've been diagnosed with esophageal cancer, which is really gross and graphic and probably one of the best non-existent person illnesses I've seen in a while. Um, it's defied all forms of medical treatment. And right now you have only a few months to live. You want me to you, you want me to use this money. That's uh, 20,000 million uh, or 5 million pounds, which I'm in the United States. So I don't even know how many pounds is, but apparently you think this is a lot of money and you want to send it to a charity's home. Uh, to fulfill a promise to uh, to Allah, which I respect your spirituality and your, your devotion. But in some ways, I'm more concerned about your daughter uh, because you say you want her safe, but then you decide you're going to give all of your money to a charity's home. Um, and then you want me to take care of her since her father died when you don't even know me. I, I really need to put you in touch with our previous uh, non-existent letter writer um in terms of this over idealization you can't trust your daughter with me you don't know who i am um so i really would ex encourage you to you know really take a look while you can at how you evaluate who's going to take care of your children and also i think you really need to take a look at your priorities i mean a charity's home giving them all of this money that's nice but what about your daughter why are you shipping her off to live with some strange guy that lives you know in another part of the world. Now, uh, I, I think it is great that you, as I said, that you're devout. Um, and I don't think you really need to worry about the punishment of the fire for two really important reasons. One is that you have esophageal cancer and that is probably much more painful um, than fire at this time. Um, and second, you don't exist. And so non-existent people cannot burn. So you do not need to worry about burning because, as I have mentioned, you do not exist. Guys, do you have anything you want to add about to either of those about about that? Do you feel like I was a little too harsh on her? I just noticed the majority of them refer to cancer. Yeah. Particularly that one multiple times you referenced that she has really bad cancer. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think there is a cancer epidemic that we're seeing in people that don't exist. I think the maybe part of it is the environmental factors of non-existent people. Um, perhaps there is a non-existent genetic component to this, but you're right, Noah, there is uh, quite a bunch of people that don't exist that have cancer. Andrew, anything you're thinking about? No. <laughs> Are you at a loss for words, Andrew? <laughs> I'm just struck by all these wealthy people that want to give away their money because they're dying. And how miserable they are in their life, right? And how wealth, and, and how, yeah. So who's next? I can. I can. Oh, okay. You know okay. This one is a bit ironic for a variety of reasons, but anyway. I am, there's no, there's no like formal introduction. Start okay. with, I am Din. Daniela, 17 years from Mariupol in Ukraine. Due to war, we left home together with our neighbor for safety. Situation of things with my parent is unbearable. I have a little sister that is asthmatic patient. I am having the fear of losing her. Body temperature got get worse at night. My parents can't afford for her drugs any longer and some sick people here. We left Poland too hungry <laughs> due to... <laughs> Large number of Ukraine nationality going to the closest neighboring country. I'm using this means on behalf of Polish citizens here in Hungary to help us in a financial means globally for sustenance till the war is called off. Thanks for the kind gesture as you are willing to save a soul. Best regards, Daniela. So, this asthmatic part hits home a little bit for me, but it's besides <laughs> the point. <laughs> And I'm glad you mentioned that because sometimes if it, it you can certainly tell our our listeners more about it. How does it home for hit home for you? My sister has asthma. Okay. I don't know. I would say I noticed about this one. There's um poor spelling and punctuation. Okay. Grammar. Yeah. Again, it's really hard when 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 people that don't exist try to communicate to other people, whether the other people exist or not, in their uh, in a, a second language, you'll you'll see some of that. Um, let's let let me just take a uh, let me just talk a little bit about Daniela, um, and and uh, Daniela. First off, uh, I, I I know what Noah just said, but for someone who's seventeen, um, for a non-existent seventeen-year-old, your language is really good, um, and. Uh, I, I'm not sure who we is. I know that you have at least parents and a little sister. Um, and But it's not clear to me whether your non-existent parents um, are causing problems for you because you said the situation is unbearable. Um, so maybe uh, that I'd want to know more about that. Now, when you say you have a little sister that is an asthmatic patient um, and your fear of losing her because her body temperature gets worse, worse at night, I have to tell you, um, I really don't think that that has to do with asthma. Um, if your non-existent sister is having a, a temperature getting worse at night, it's probably important that you take her to a non-existent doctor in a unreal hospital as soon as possible. Um, however, in the meantime, I would point out to you that um, you don't need to feel fearful about losing her because she's not real. OK, you're, you're not real and she's not real. And since neither of you are real, you're not going to lose her. Um, and your parents aren't real either. So uh, I know that may, you know, things with them are unbearable, but, you know, they're not real. So it, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Your parents can't afford her drugs any longer. And some sick people here is very confusing to me. Are you saying there are sick people in the house with you and your parents? Are they taking the drugs? Is there an opioid epidemic happening in Maripol uh, amongst the non-existent uh, refugees? I'm curious about all of that. Um, and, and I also am very confused at your travel plan, travel arrangements, because it says you left Poland to Hungary due to the large number of Ukraine natu nationality going to the closest neighboring country. So it's not quite clear where you are. 
But what I would tell you is that since you are a non-existent person, you do not need to worry about dying and you do not need to flee any country. And so you can stop moving around. As a non-existent person, you probably should just stay in one real country. Um, or heck, you could go to a non-existent one. You could go to the Marvel Cinematic Universe if you want. There is, doesn't seem to be a Ukraine crisis in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So maybe go there. Um, you have a lot more freedom when you're not real um, in terms of where you have to stay or go. Um, now you say you're using this means on behalf of Polish, Polish citizens here in Hungary to help us in a financial means globally for sustenance until the war is called off. Um, I don't think they're going to call the war off, Daniela. Um, That's true. Not to interrupt, but she yep. sort of flip mentions that like it's no real big deal. Yeah. Just call it off one day. Yeah. So, so clearly the question is, is, is this because Daniela, as a non-existent 17-year-old adolescent, doesn't understand the geopolitical structure of the global economy? Or is it because she just doesn't care? Because she's more interested in, you know, her non-existent um, adolescent pastimes. I, I have no idea. Um, by the way, if you are joining us in chat and you have some thoughts and uh, a backseat information or advice for any of the non-existent people that we are talking about, please feel free to mention it. it and right, GJ, it is hard to understand with a non-existent brain. Um, I am going to look for um, the, the, next, the next one. Let's see. I'm going back as far as I can to see um, what, if any, um, uh, there might be here. I don't see. Let's see. Okay, so this one, um, this one comes from Mariam Al Khalid, and Mariam writes, "Dearest, good day, and how are you doing today? I'm really delighted to communicate with you, and I believe we can achieve something together." Every, everything together and create something great in nearest future. My name is Ms. Mariam Alkhalid Yasin Samir, and I'm a young girl of 24 years old from Kobani, a city in the Aleppo government, governorate in northern Syria. And presently, I'm residing in the Republic of Burkina Faso as a refugee to, due to killing of my parents by the ISIS fighters on the year 2015, popularly known as the Kobani Massacre. That was carried out by the Daesh ISIS fighters. Please don't be discouraged for hearing this. I believe deep and down inside me that you will never break my heart or let me down in any way. Now, I'm going to stop right there and, and basically point out to you a couple of things, Mariam. Uh, so first off, I do think it's great that you're kind of polite. And it is really good when you say I'm really delighted to communicate with you and that we can be you believe we can achieve everything together. Because whether you don't exist or you do exist, when you start a therapy alliance, you do need to be prepared to do some work. And so I'm glad that you're, you know, reaching out and trying to engage with a positive attitude. Now, I have to tell you, uh, I don't know about the culture you grew up in, and I do know that you may be a little regressed due to the, or the trauma that you went through in 2015. But um, whether you're real or not, at 24, you're not a young girl. At 24, you are a woman. And I think that you need to take a look at the, you know, uh, sexism that you may have interjected from the uh, surroundings of you, which you're, you're not a young girl, you're a woman. Um, I uh, am really sorry uh, that your parents were killed. Um, I, I don't think that uh, using the term popularly is really appropriate when we talk about massacres. Um, I, you know, I, I understand you're, you're not necessarily speaking your first language, but I, I do have a concern about that. It makes me wonder if maybe you're doing some reaction formation there. Maybe uh, you're actually saying in some ways the opposite of what you, what you mean. Um, 
and and again when you say you believe, you believe deep down inside me that i will never break your heart you're over idealizing me um you don't know whether i'll break your heart or not or let you down and i have to tell you as somebody that is a real human being i let people down all the time and that is one of the reasons uh we have people that come to therapy with relational difficulties is that people let each other down all the time that's actually part of being human um even if you don't exist it's probably part of being human let's continue with your letter my beloved father mr al khaled yasin samir was the mayor of the city of kobani and also the head of aleppo investment authority the brutal killing of my father took place early one morning by the daesh isis fighters as a result of the ongoing civil war in syria if i was in my first year in the university of aleppo studying arts and humanities before the sad incident that led to the death of my beloved father darling i know that it is too early to disclose my life story to you but please bear with me my living condition is very critical please i need your possible help to reclaim my inheritance and start a new life my uncle have sought to kill me so that he will have full control of my father's estate but i am happy that all his evil failed Okay, so first off, I think there may have been some problems uh, for your non-existent father uh, having a dual relationship as both the mayor of the city and the head of an investment authority. That sounds like a really big contra contradiction. GJ says, don't worry, she's going to share with you if you help. I appreciate Yes, she probably is. Now, um, I have to say, if she says that this happened in 2015, which is seven years ago, and that she is 24 now, and that she was in her first year at University of Aleppo, I think you may have some learning delays, or you may have had an interrupted college experience, which can be very disruptive to people when they don't exist, um, or when they do exist. Usually, uh, we want to have a college experience that's a little bit more contiguous. Now, I understand that you had patricide uh i mean of your father dying and your uncle trying to kill you that probably distracted you from your studies but it would have probably been better for everyone concerned if you'd kind of focused on just getting through school rather than um, getting involved with your family homicides um i i i do think when you you're sending me a very mixed message when you say it's too early to disclose your life story but you're calling me darling now i i think that's a very mixed message which it you know makes me think that you're not quite sure how as a non-existent person to deal with intimacy and i can understand that because it's hard enough for people that do exist to know how to have good boundaries and be intimate and uh, set expectations with other people that exist. Um, when you're non-existent, it must be even more challenging. Um, but let's continue. Um, I decided to travel abroad in order to secure my future. But the problem is that since I don't have an international passport, I cannot be allowed to enter any country freely and legally. However, the only choice for me was to enter Turkey because it is not far from Kobani and many people are crossing to Turkey. So I joined them and crossed over to Turkey. Now, Mary, just because many non-existent people are doing something doesn't mean it's right for you to do it too. And if you don't have a passport, you shouldn't be going to a different country, even if you don't exist. Um, now, I don't know what to tell you, but you've got to play by the rules unless, you know, you want to basically say, hey, I'm a non-existent person, so I don't need passports, in which case you don't have to play by those rules. You can go to the Marvel Cinematic Universe with the previous person that we were talking to that doesn't exist and, and you can go anywhere you want. But um, Turkey uh, that 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 that's where you went and you said it was in my presence that the turkish soldiers gunned down kadir or takaya a famous woman activist at the turkey and syria border a lot happened during this conflict it was awful i only thank god i'm alive today i arrived in burkina faso boy you 
really wrote a long, long letter here. I arrived in Burkina Faso through the help of the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement. They were moving people away from the Turkish border because of the insecurity of the border. So they moved some people to Canada, some to Germany and Italy, and a few to Morocco and Burkina Faso. Uh, I decided to come to Burkina Faso because when my beloved father was alive, he revealed to me about the sum of $27.5 million that he deposited in one of the banks in Burkina Faso with my name as next of kin. On my arrival to Ouagadougou, where the bank is located, I contracted them to clear the money, but the branch operation manager who confirmed the deposited amount of money told me that my status as a refugee, according to the laws in Burkina Faso, does not permit me to engage in any bank transaction. He advised me to nominate a trustee who will stand on my behalf and carry out the operation. This has become necessary for me after I've been denied the right to own a bank account or perform other forms of financial transaction here because I am a political asylum seeker. So I decided to get in touch with you so that you will help me with the transfer of this money into your bank account for investment in your country. After you've received the money in your bank account, you'll send me some amount of money to process my traveling papers because I want to relocate to your country where I will start a new life with you. And I intend to complete my academic studies in your country. I, will ac I accept to share my life with you and give you all my attention from day one of the meetings. Okay. Let's just stop right there. So first off, um, we need to talk a little bit, Miriam, about boundaries. Um, as a non-existent person, um, you really have to be a little bit more careful about how you, you know, place your trust with people, but also presuming that you're going to come live in this country and have a relationship with me, a person that does exist, who's never met you, seems a little bit much. And I'm very concerned about uh, your ambivalence about completing your education because, you know, first it was a massacre, then it was being a refugee, and then it's going to be coming to be married or spend your life with me. I don't think you're really dedicated to your studies. There's always something that you seem to find before it, like, oh, $27 million. Oh, my uncle wants to kill me. You seem to keep coming up with reasons to interrupt your education. You know, we tell people that they ought to go to school. And I think that's really doing a lot of people a disservice. Not everyone wants to get educated in a formal or institutional way. If you don't want to go to school, Miriam, you don't have to um, for a couple reasons. One, because you don't exist. But two, even if you did exist, there are plenty of other options for you as a non-existent refugee. Um, but you can't keep, you know, saying that it's everybody else's fault that your education isn't happening. Oh, my uncle tried to kill me. Oh, my father was massacred. And, you, you know, you can't, you can't ride on the coattails of these other, you know, famous women activists that are real, that get killed, and expect that that's going to get you anywhere in life. Um, so decide whether or not you want an education. And if you don't want an education, that's fine. Um, but if you do want an education, you really can't move to another country and expect that you're going to be able to finish your degree and, um, you know, take care of me as a real person. Uh, as you, you did mention um, that you want me to confirm your interest to help you. And as a therapist, I'm always interested in trying to help people. Um, but I'm, con I'm concerned that I would give you mixed messages if I said I was interested in helping you because it does seem like you're um, looking for something a little bit different than a therapist when you call me darling. Um, and you, you did say, it, it, you closed your letter by begging me to please keep this a top secret between us for confidential reasons. At the mo moment, I'm living in a mission house. Um, life in this place is very unbearable because we're not allowed to go out and we are monitored by the church security guard. Um, uh, you know, I can't keep secrets like that. Um, if you were a real person, I might um, be able to hold some sort of confidentiality. But since Twitch is in therapy and since you don't really exist, 
I really can't keep any secrets here. Um, uh, and I, I do think that perhaps you might want to talk with people where you are and see if maybe they can help you enroll in, in some sort of educational program there so that you can really kind of start to decide whether or not you want to finish school um, before you go, you know, moving to another country or blaming another family uh, member dying or trying to kill you for academic failure. Um, so uh, if you're watching us on Twitch, we are reading some spam emails that I get um, from people that don't exist and providing them with real therapy. Uh, because since they don't exist, it's okay to do that. Um, if you are just joining us, we're going to be taking a quick break where we're going to get a couple more letters. Um, in the meantime, please don't go. And...